Before we get started into today's video where we're going to look at what might be the best brewery in the world, we just want to remind you guys that we have a Patreon that funds everything that we do. If you love supporting independent content, you love what we do, head to patreon.com slash channel. Hey Beer Geeks and welcome back to the... <laughs> Hype train! <laughs> I thought you were going to Hong Kong. Ah, Have I, I bounced you out of doing that? I wasn't sure what you were doing. I thought you were milking a cow or something. <laughs> I was like, I, I, I don't know. Welcome to Milking the Hype Cow. Oh, yeah. Uh, this week we have uh, the best brewery in the world, Brad. Technically, by a lot of merit, a lot of standards and a lot of competitions, yeah. yes. Very many different beer apps would rate Hill Farmstead as the best brewery in the world. And we're about to find out whether they are to some extent. So most people are probably saying, hey, I can't wait for these guys to taste all those double IPAs. When we went there, that wasn't really what interested us. No. Um, not only because we'd had a ton of New England IPA by that point on our trip, so we bought these while we were filming our documentary up in New England. Uh, that's at the end of this video. We thought we'd buy all the Saisons, and also because from our, my experience at least, their Saisons have been much better than their IPAs when I've tasted them from Hill Farmstead. And they're gonna, they're gonna travel better. They're gonna travel better too, yeah. that's true. That's why we've waited all this time. Uh, so we've got something a little bit core related. This is Arthur, which is like their classic, almost like house hoppy Saison kind of thing. And I think they do some barrel stuff with it to make other blends. Yeah. Uh, and then we've got something a little bit wackier that we'll get onto, which hmm. uh, caught my eye because uh, it had a whole paragraph of ingredients and you know how I love that. <laughs> if we reference the last one we did. So let's start off with Arthur. Oh yeah. So Arthur has a lovely story on the back. It does, doesn't it, Johnny? Uh, it was, about... <laughs> it was uh, the, the, the founder's granddad's brother. Youngest his, brother. Youngest brother, who would be his <laughs> great uncle or something. Yeah. So he was called Arthur and he was one of 13 siblings. And he owned the land on which Hill Farmstead is now. Yeah, which is absolutely spectacular. Isn't oh, it? Um, yeah. I mean, if you can handle the drive up. Luckily, we did get a four x four from the car rental. Yeah. Otherwise, we could have we could have been in dead in a ditch. Oh yeah, we got it. We didn't mess around. We got a proper Subaru. Uh, how many feet of snow on the sides? You reckon? Six, seven, it's eight. Amazing. More than a man. Well, I mean, more I than us. I was I was trying to steer clear of the yellow snow. That's always very tempting. So yeah, so this is this is a, a hoppy saison we picked up. When we were up there, you drank a pilsner, I think. They made a pretty good done. attempt at a pilsner kale. Okay. Not as good as pilsner kale. Okay, I, I was driving that day. I was I was manning up going up that hill. Oh, that is wonderful. Very, very fresh, isn't it? Very fresh, floral, like a meadow. Lemon, lemon, yeah. Like you're walking around a meadow with a lemon under your nose. Someone's hit me in the face with a lemon. Sorry. In a meadow. I was having yeah. a lovely time rolling in the meadow. <laughs> Somebody threw and a lemon at you. Lemony. Yeah, absolutely beautiful. A little bit of funk. So we're saying there's some lacto, lactobacillus stuff going on in there. Um, but also lots of nice clean saison spice. Well, not lots. Touches of it. It's very well balanced. I feel like it's lemony peppery. It's like a little peppery bit peppery as well. As well. For sure. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm meaning. Yeah. Mm. Mm. That's putting a smile on my face. What a well balanced beer. Yeah. That's glorious. It's, it's soft and grainy up front, mm. loads of lemon hitting you in the chops, and then just a tiny hint of cleaning bitterness, no, like noble bitterness, like Sars or Halatau, something nice and Central European that's, that's giving it a kind of crisp, mm. almost lagery, honeyed finish kind of thing. It's, it has got that lightness of lager. It's almost, dare I say it, like the best shandy I think I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a, like a lemony... A bunch of biggies on the internet just went... <laughs> with fury it's i mean it's uh, it's obviously way better than any shandy i've ever had but it has got a bit of a shandy vibe going it on. does it does it's got that lemoniness added to a nice what i presume is probably mostly pil almost all pilsner malt i think oh. that's where that's coming from that's so we're getting delicious. noble hops and pilsner malt that's making us think of lager but then lovely lemon acidity and uh it says it's american and uh european hops i'm not getting much american hop but i think that's potentially what he was after Maybe some of that lemoniness is just being dialed up by a tiny bit of American hop. It's beautiful. It's very, uh, I'm finding it quite exciting. I don't know if I'm getting um, taken away by the hype train, Johnny, but that does taste sensational, man. <laughs> Rubbing your thighs under yeah, the yeah, table. Yeah, that's, that's good. That's, that's a, a good thigh one, rubber. Me. That's a thigh rubber. <laughs> it's quite, I mean, it's not massive, is it? But it's, it's just lovely. No, I mean, 
that, that's what a core beer should be. Mm. It's something that the brewers are constantly drinking when they finish work. Oh. It's what you'd maybe go there and have a good large glass of um, after a hard day or a long yeah. drive. It's just the perfect sipping beer. It's right. glorious. Smashing that in the summertime. Ooh. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Maybe we'll have to go back in summer and try that. That would be spectacular. Because it was a wee bit cold. It was a little bit. Yeah. So it's one of those beers where once we finish filming, I'm very excited to go back to that and just enjoy the rest of that bottle. We yeah. do generally finish what we open on the Craft Beer Channel, but sometimes we do struggle. Uh, our next hype train, we might struggle to do that with. Uh, we'll reveal what that is soon. Um, right, so beer number two, uh, also picked up from when we were over there. Uh, I've, I've just got to read this little bit because it's glorious. Ages ago, nice and vague, mm. our dear friend Bim LaFontaine. Ah, oh, he's like from Anchorman, I believe, isn't he? <laughs> like News to La nine. Lanolin, like sheep's wool. <laughs> um, Bim LaFontaine travelled from Japan to brew with us the inaugural batch of Brother Sonye which we're told uh, by our man of Captain Tapsville over there uh, that that means like dapper, fine dressed, groomed. groomed. Yeah. Like, like us two gents. Like us, refined. With our sort of month's worth of non groomness. <laughs> Speak for yourself. This took, this took work. Uh, to brew a collaboration that we continue to produce in the spirit of that visit. So, the original beer, I think, is uh, a farmhouse ale, so a bit like we just had, yeah. like a, a slightly funky Saison with lime and blood orange. And then they've taken that beer and they've conditioned it atop, is the word they've used, raspberry, cherry, and northern kiwi fruit. Not southern, not none eastern, of, not western. None of that southern shit. Nope. <laughs> Sorry. Northern Sorry, kiwi mum. fruit. Northern kiwi fruit. Keep it northern. That's what they think anyway. Woo. That's gone for it. Nice smoke on the opening. I'd like to know the difference between northern and non-northern kiwi fruit. Well, well, it has an accent. <laughs> is it like a... It doesn't talk. Is it like a sort of scouse type fruit or a, like a, a, a sort of a drawl? Does it have like a southern, well, a northern kind of thing? I don't know. I'm, I'm waffling now. Yeah, I think the are. first one's got to me. <laughs> right. So there's a tiny pink hue to this, but I'm not expecting huge amounts of raspberry. Yeah. Or it's cherry. Or, or northern kiwi. Or northern kiwi. Probably no southern kiwi, but that's, that's for the best, clearly. Uh, right, let's get the nose. Oh, there's lots going on. Mm. I'm actually getting lots of raspberry. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit funkier. Raspberry, really pithy, really blood orange skin. Mm. It's not a juicy smell, it's a pithy... Yeah, it's quite big. Bitter smell, it's really nice. Yeah, I'm slightly scared by the, uh, the bitterness there. It's kind the, of grapefruity um, almost. Yeah, I'm thinking of eating... I think I've eaten... If you eat a grapefruit skin... Well, we used it in our French guy cooking collab, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, we did. For and it really, it's really stinks. Insanely bitter. Yeah. Like, don't eat it at home, guys. No. It's, it's weird stuff. Um, well, you reckon that's what this is going to be? Don't know. Very pithy and lemony. It's making me make some dolphin noises. Very smooth, very drinkable. <laughs> it is, it's not angular, is it? No, that pithiness is all on the nose. It's actually quite juicy. It is juicy. Um, lovely tartness from the, the raspberry, lovely depth from the mm. cherry. Kiwi, kiwi, any kiwi? No kiwi for me. It might be Maybe some... it's that northern, elusive northern kiwi. It doesn't <laughs> taste like a kiwi. Maybe I mean, it tastes like a raspberry. Maybe northern kiwi tastes like. Definitely limey as well. Maybe maybe that's what we were picking up on the nose actually when we were saying it's really pithy and sour. Yeah. It's lime, isn't it? Obviously Could be thinking lime. about it. Um, and there's lots of lime on the finish, very zesty. Mm. It's again incredibly balanced. And I'm really heartened by the fact that the supposed best brewery in the world is putting a whole ton of different flavours in, much like other half did. Yeah. But they're doing it for balance, for nuance, to like fill in the gaps and make sure all the flavour profiles, the whole of your tongue is yeah. kind of coated in flavour, whereas other people are just using it to sledgehammer your palate. Yeah, they're, they're kind of, if I had to make an analogy of it, it's, it's like a, an orchestra that are singing together. They're all in tune, whereas... Do you mean a choir that's singing together? Well, and I'd say an orchestra, all the different high notes and the low right. notes, but then you, you might get a cacophony of sound from a, uh, a, a, a school's orchestra, which might be other half or somebody where they school orchestra where they're a bit something's a little bit off <laughs> like the, the the trombone guys like you know something like that like doing a trombone slide there's yeah, none of that here it's all that. like this sexy is, piccolo this is oh sexy piccolo <laughs> i'm confused by well i'm not confused by it but i was expecting it to be more 
angular and I like with all those different things in it it's amazing how balanced that is, really. Yeah, I mean, I picked that up because I was like, what the hell is that going to taste what like? They, what when, you walk, out, yeah. when you walk into the bottle shop at Hill Farmstead and you're just confronted with, like, you've got a queue behind you, you've got a guy who's just used to beer nerds taking forever to pick. So I was, like, feeling the pressure. Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> I'll take the Arthur because I know the Arthur's good and, and, and I want to talk about core beers. And then, like, I was just confronted with about 10 different bottles. You had to give your credit card and your ID to prove you weren't a trader or something as well. Mm. So it was very precious. And I just went for the one that had the longest description, to be honest, because I was like, at least that's something to talk about. And I'm really glad I did, because it's incredibly balanced. It's beautiful. Yeah, oh, it's gorgeous stuff. Yeah. So, guys, if you're ever in that part of the world, you 100% have to go out to Hill Farmstead. Uh, brave the drive. It's worth it. Um, go uh, well fed so that you can have a beer or two and still drive because there's no it's food a beautiful offering place. Up, uh, I mean, we were very out of season. Maybe there is yeah. at other times of year, yeah. but it's a beautiful place to sit on the veranda, have one of their decoction pilsners or like something like Arthur, and take some special bottles home for you to 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 muse over, like we have, and talk about orchestras and Anchorman and all the things that we tend to. Best brewery in the world for you. Uh, I mean, that's easily one of the best farmhouse beers I've ever had. Absolutely. It's, I mean, I, for me, I can't, I can't say that's the best beer in the world because I haven't tried all the beer in the world. No, it's but, true. We're working on it. You know, yeah. this is cracking stuff. Absolutely beautiful stuff. And I can't, you know, off the top of my head, I couldn't name somebody, maybe, maybe Forrester Maine, who we've also yeah. been to, making delicious saisons in America. But yeah, really, really special stuff. So yeah, do check out our documentary, All About New England, uh, in which we very briefly feature Hill Farmstead, just the drive and us drinking some beer. Mm. Um, but otherwise, check out all our other hype trains and see if the world's rarest beers are really worth tracking down. I think we can say that these guys are. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.